Hey guys, welcome to lesson four of chapter eight, and we are going to be talking about graphing quadratics. So this should be a review for you guys, but we're just going to kind of hit um, some things that you might have forgotten. Okay, so um, there's usually three different forms um, that you deal with. So vertex form, um, I, I guess I could do it with like letters, um, but a lot of times it's just easier to see actual examples of it. So let me do it both ways for vertex form. Okay, so um, this is the just a generic form for vertex form. And vertex form is really nice because it just shows you what the vertex is. So your vertex is always H and K. So in this case, it's going to be two, one is my vertex. Okay, in standard form, I'm gonna do the same thing. Um, so this is the generic equation for it. And then I just use this example because um, standard form is not as easy to get the vertex. So to find the vertex, we have to first find the axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry, um, to find that, the formula for that is x equals negative b over 2a. So if you'll remember, the axis of symmetry, so I'm just going to pretend oops, that this parabola goes right here the axis of symmetry cuts the parabola in half. And so it's a line, like this is x equals blah, blah, blah. And we're gonna find this using, um, uh, we're gonna, sorry, we're gonna find it using like the a, b, and c from here. So like for instance, for this one, our a is one, our b is six, and our c is negative one. So if I wanted to find the axis of symmetry here, it's gonna be negative b, and negative just means the opposite. So if that's a positive, it becomes negative. If it's a negative, it becomes positive. So it'd be like negative six over two times one. So negative six over three is negative two. So I know that my axis of symmetry is at negative two. So I start there. So I know that my vertex is going to be negative two something, but I don't know what that something is. So I have to plug in the negative two for X in all the places and see what I get. So Y equals negative two squared plus six times negative two minus one. And notice how I'm using the parentheses. Make sure you do that um, because if you don't, your calculator will read it wrong. I just realized that I couldn't divide here. Um, negative six divided by two is negative three. And so that's what I'm plugging in everywhere. So I have nine minus 18 minus one. Um, let's see, that's negative nine, negative 10. So that's the process that you go to go through to find the vertex. So it's kind of a lengthy process. Um, the final form is intercept form. And this is the generic equation for it. So this is when you have like a, um, a quadratic equation factored in factored form. So I gave you an example right here. And um, so these, they're, it's called intercept form or factored form because these are our zeros. So our zeros are at x equals three and x equals one. So we're gonna start there. So one, two, three. And sorry, goodness gracious. Um, so x equals one and x equals three. So halfway between that, because everything is super symmetric, that's gonna be our axis of symmetry. So I know that our axis of symmetry is gonna be x equals two. So again, it's halfway between. That's the, that's the main thing that you need to remember. And so from there, we're just gonna treat it like a standard equation. So we're just gonna plug in um, the two everywhere we see it. So let's see, I'll have, I'll write it over here. So two times two minus three, and then two minus one. So two times negative one times positive one is negative two. So our vertex here is two, negative two. So I, I know that it looks something like that. Okay, and so for this next section here, are just some things that um, have come up over the years. Um, when you've talked about graphing quadratics and I just wanted to kind of revisit it. Um, so this is gonna tell us whether it opens up or opens down. So if A is greater than zero, so let's go back up and let's look at what A's look like. So it's, it's usually connected to that first term. It's always connected to the square term, except if it's down here and then it's already factored. Um, but if it's greater than zero, 
then it's going to open up. So you would say concave up. If that A is less than zero, it's going to open down. So you'd say it's concave down. Um, the maximum and minimum value of a quadratic, um, that is always the Y value of the vertex. So let's look back up here. So this would be a maximum or minimum value. Um, this is going to be a maximum and minimum value. This is going to be a maximum and minimum value. So it depends on whether it goes up or it goes down. So if it goes up, this y value, the vertex, that's going to be your minimum. And then if it goes down, the y value of your vertex, that is going to be your maximum. So let's look at um, this one, for example. So this opens up, and so I have a minimum at negative 2. So that's how we would say that. Okay, um, the next thing I want to talk about is the domain and range. So the domain on every quadratic is just going to be the set of all reals. You can say negative infinity to positive infinity, however you want to do that. Um, if it is going up, it is going to be, it is going to be your um, y value to positive infinity. If it is going down, it is going to be negative infinity to your y value every single time. And notice how I have like bracket and parenthesis combination depending on what it is. But for everything, the domain is just going to be all reals. Okay, um, finding intercepts. So it doesn't matter if it's a quadratic or doesn't matter. To find the y-intercept, you're going to set x equal to 0. To find the x-intercept, you're going to set y equal to 0 every single time. So what's really nice is like when it's in standard form, um, this is automatically, so I'm setting that x equal to 0, this is automatically our y-intercept. So that's super easy to find. But as a general rule for anything, it doesn't matter if it's quadratics or what, um, this is going to be um, your thought process there. And something else I want to say, um, any quadratic function will only have one intercept. Sorry, I don't think I said the y-intercept. It will only have only one y-intercept. Um, x-intercepts, they might ha it might have zero, one, or two intercepts. So just kind of depending on the problem. Okay, and also something else that I want to talk about is making a table. So um, if you, and a lot of your calculators can do this too, um, but let's pretend that we have, um, we found the vertex. We are going to put the vertex in the middle. So I'm just going to say my vertex was 4, negative 2. I'm just throwing that out there. Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to work up on my x value. So I'm going to go 3, 2, and then I'm going to work down 5, 6. If I do it this way, then these values are always going to pair up, and these values are always going to pair up. So for example, if I'm trying to find um, the y value when x equals 2, I'm going to plug this in. So let's pretend, um, I have no idea, let's pretend it's like negative 7. Okay, so I don't have to do any math. I can come down here, and this is also negative 7. Um, let's pretend like this, I plug it in, I do the math, and that's negative 3. I automatically know that that's negative 3. So on your test, I'm looking for five points, and I want you to go through that process. Okay, so let's um, go ahead and solve some of these. So this is in vertex form. So I automatically know that my vertex is going to be 3, negative 8. So let's go ahead and graph it. Okay, got that. Okay, the axis of symmetry. So I know that my axis of symmetry is going to be um, x equals, sorry, x equals, and then my x value of my vertex. So x equals 3. So I'm going to represent that by dashed line. Okay, so I got that. 
and um, concavity. Okay, so it, I know that it opens up because that is positive. So I know it's going to do something like that. And um, domain, remember how I said the domain is always negative infinity to positive infinity. And my range, okay, so let's see, it opens up. And so I'm going to take this. And so my range is going to be negative 8 to infinity. Um, X-intercepts, Y-intercepts, I'll deal with that in a second. Let's, let's make up the table. So I have 3, negative 8, so I'm going to go 2, 1, 4, and 5. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug, I'll start with this one. So I'll plug 1 into this function, I'll plug 2 into this function, and I'm just going to get my y values that way. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so I plotted my points. Notice the pairs um, that I pointed out, like here and here. Um, and I went ahead and um, graphed my parabola. Okay, so I wanted to hold off on the intercepts because a lot of times at least one of them will um, show up in the, in the problem. Okay, so right here, um, remember I find my x-intercepts and I set my y equal to zero. So that's what that means is that um, my x-intercepts are at one zero and five zero. And so my y-intercepts, I'm going to set x equal to zero. So go ahead and plug in 0 for x here and see what you get. So you should get 0, 10 if you did your math correctly. So we have our intercepts and we have our tables. So we are done with that problem. OK, um, in standard form, so this is standard form. So the first thing I want to do is call out what is my a, what is my b, what is my c. So a is negative 1. B is negative 2, C is 4. And remember, this one is really easy to find the y-intercept. So I know that my y-intercept is at 0, 4. And I'm not sure about my x-intercepts yet. OK, so um, the next thing is we have to state the vertex. So remember, the first thing we have to do is solve for the axis of symmetry. So the formula for that is negative B over 2A. So opposite of b, positive 2 over 2 times negative 1. So 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. So that is right here. So I know that my vertex is going to be negative 1 something. So I'm just going to plug that in right there. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in negative 1 right here and see what happens. So you should have gotten negative 1, 5. And so I just want to show you a mistake that I just made. So um, when I graphed this, I said that x is negative 1, which is correct. But notice where I put my axis symmetry and my vertex is right here. So I know that, that I, I graphed it wrong. So just be on the lookout for things like that because it's really easy to make a silly mistake. OK, so. Um, I have negative 1, 5, and so I'm going to go negative 2, negative 3, 0, and 1, and find your y values, and just, just remember that you only have to do one of those pairs um, to get the correct y values. Go ahead and do that. Okay, so I finished the table, and I um, went ahead and graphed it, and notice the concavity that's opening down. Um, so I got that. The axis symmetry is x equals negative 1. Um, okay, so the domain and range. So remember the domain always stays the same. The range, how low does it go? Negative infinity, how high does it go? It's at y value, so 5, bracket. Okay, the intercepts, um, we found the y-intercept. That was easy to find. The x-intercept is not going to be that easy to find. So we are going to have to set y equal to 0 and solve for x. So guys, a lot of times for these, you're going to have to do the quadratic formula. Okay, so I just um, found the two x-intercepts. So my first x-intercept is going to be 1 plus square root of 5, 0. And my second intercept is going to be 1 minus square root of 5, 0. So those are definitely um, more difficult to find. Um, but I think we've done everything for that one. So there's two more, and I'm going to do that in another video.